Okay, hi everyone. Um, so today I thought I'll be doing a video on how do you do normality test or basically test for any form of distribution using Excel. Now, as you can realize that normality test is actually pretty important because um, statistical tests, all the parametric statistical tests like ANOVA, T-test, even for your Pearson's regression, or Pearson's correlation requires the underlying data to be normally distributed. But as you realize that in Excel, there's actually no way to do normality test or no easy way to do normality test. So what are normality tests? It's basically to test whether is the data conforming to a normal distribution. Okay. So common methods will be, um, which you can actually do inside SPSS, will be things like your komorogov smirnov test. It is a very popular test, komorogov smirnov test. You can actually do um, Jackie Barak test um, using Excel to some extent because it only requires the ketosis and ketosis and skew. A common test are, will be things like your anderson darling test. Okay. But other tests is actually not easy to do. So what happened is we can actually mimic Excel to do this using your Pearson's chi-square test, which is actually using chi-square test to test for normal distribution. I will not show you how to actually do normal normality test using chi-square test, but I'm going to test my data. Whether does it conform to uniform distribution? And using the same method, you can actually apply it to any distribution that you want. Normal distribution, extreme distribution, extreme value distribution, log normal, up to you. Okay. So how does it work? Now the concept of normality test comes into here. Okay. So let's say I have a uniform distribution. Okay. So uniform distribution, that means all the data is uniformly distributed. Okay. So this is the frequency. So this is how it looks like. Now, if it's uniformly distributed, I can kind of slice this data. Let me slice them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, kind of run out of space, 7, um, 8. Okay. Let me just extend two more, just to make it even. Okay. So, I can say that I start off here with 0. Um, and I'll test for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so this is removed. Okay. So essentially, what I'm trying to see is is there equal numbers from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 2? So using that, I can actually construct, for example, I have 1000. Or even just 100 numbers. Okay, n equals 100. So, what it really means here is for every category, that means between 0, 0 to 1, I should expect only 10 values. From 1 to 2, I should expect 10 values and so on. Okay. Remember, I use the word expect 10 values because this is quite useful. Right. This gives me the expected values or expected frequency for your um, chi-square test. Make sense? So all I need to do is, does my observed frequency, so my observed frequency, does it matches these values? Okay. And I can run a chi-square test with it. So without further ado, let us go to your Excel and see how we're going to do that. Okay, let me go to Excel. Okay, so I have a set of data in Excel. So here, I have five columns and I generated 500 numbers. Okay, random generation, just 500 numbers. I want to test does, so my hypothesis is that, um, so my now hypothesis, is that the data um, is uniformly distributed. 
Okay, my alternate hypothesis is the data is not uniformly distributed. Distribute. That means it follows a normal distribution. Okay, spelling error here. Normally distributed. Why is this important? Because as you can see, if I can use normal distribution to do that, to do this, or rather uniform distribution to do this, I can set it up totally with another distribution. Okay, just that it may not be that easy. It may not be that obvious in a sense. I can set it up with a normal distribution, and all I need is each part. I can use standard deviations. I can use each part. What is the expected values for here? If let's say here is hundred, what is the expected frequency for each portion? I can calculate that out. Okay, so you can actually do any form of distribution that you want. You can even do your let me just you can even do a extreme or of any form of factor distribution your f distribution does it conform to a f distribution okay so you can have something like that does it conform to a extreme distribution and so on and so forth so similarly you can split into bins and see whether each one does it conform to a certain value so the first thing we need is to, we want to look at what is the maximum and minimum numbers here. So let us just take the maximum, or rather, let's say a minimum. So let's check. Okay. Minimum value is one, maximum value is what? Okay, it's 100. Okay, so then we can use this to break into, let's say, 10 bins. So we call this bins. So bins, we can say that is from 0 to 9. Okay, then 10 to 19 and so on. Okay, so let's, oops, 10 to 19, 20 to 29. 29, <clears throat> 32, 39, 42, 49, 52, 59, 62, 69, and you can see what am I doing here, 72, 72, 79, 82, 89, 92, basically 100, okay? Then because there are 500 values here, 500 counts, so my expected is essentially divided by the number of bins. So divided by 10. Okay? So it's 50 throughout. Correct? So this, let me just get a column of total. Okay, equals to sum. I want to make sure that everything I got everything right. This is 500. All I then need to do is my observed column. So observed column, I kind of have to bin all this data into here. Right? So what I'm going to do is to do something quite easy. I'm just going to use um, count so I first I will do what I know, do as a cumulative. So cumulative, I just use a count if. Count if of a t. Count all this data. Okay, if it is less than ten, because nine zero to nine is less than ten. Okay. So how many values there are? 36. And then just drag it all the way down and I change each individual value. So less than 20, less than 30, and so on. Okay. Less than 30, less than 40, less than 50, less than 60, and less than 70. 
less than 90. So this is less than 100. 499. So because less than 100, I have to go one above it. So it gives me all the way to 100. So less than 101. So 500. Okay. Now this is a cumulative. That means less than first and 20 is actually all those values less than 20. So what I do is for my observed, I just take the same value because that's the first value. The next one, I will take the cumulative minus the bin before that. That gives me only the bin for 10 to 19. Okay. Then I do the rest. Okay. Uh, the bin before that. Hmm. No, I don't take the bin before that. Sorry, I always messed it up. So I do the cumulative before that. Ugh. Okay. Clear content. So here, I take the, the cumulative minus the, they do, okay. I take the cumulative minus the previous accumulation. Okay. So that gives me the bit. Okay. So then it gives me 500. Okay. So basically, I have been up all my data and all I need to do is to do a chi-square test. So my chi-square square, p-value okay. and for this, it's very simple. I just use a regular chi-square test. Okay. My chi-square test, actual range is my expected. Expected range of my expectation. And here it tells me that it is 0 0.01. So here it only says that um, so my data has 1.2 percent, 1.2. 2% chance that it may be uniformly distributed. That's all it tells me. So I can reject my now hypothesis. So here is I can reject <coughs> my now hypothesis at 5% alpha value. So my data is not uniformly distributed at 5% significance. That means alpha equals to 0 0.05. Okay. However, it doesn't tell me what is what my data uh, follows. Is my data normally distributed? I don't know. So if you want to do for normal distribution, all you have to do is change the expected based on the normal distribution. Or if I want to go a bit more stringent, my data is then normally distributed at a 1% significance level. Okay. So you can actually do any form of distribution testing this way. But there are a few note, um, things to take note. Number one is, remember, um, chi-square is very sensitive to the sample size. So the, num the more samples you have, the easier it is to reject the null hypothesis in some extent. Okay. The number of bins is also important because that is the degrees of freedom. Okay. You need at least about five to eight bins in order to make a difference. Okay. So that's all for today. You can use this to test for any form of data. Does it conform to a distribution? Okay. That's all. Thank you very much.